Hello everyone, this is Jacob Ames, Technical Product Manager here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, we've got a head-to-head -head comparison of DraftSight versus AutoCAD, two well-known 2D CAD tools with millions of users across the world. AutoCAD has set the gold standard in drafting for decades, while the up-and-coming DraftSight has only been around since 2011. We'll take a look at how the interfaces compare, how the features stack up, and of course, the licensing options and price tags. So let's get right into it. At their core, both AutoCAD and DraftSight are built for creating, editing, and reviewing 2D CAD files, typically DWG and DXF files. But how do they feel behind the wheel? First, let's take a look at the user interface for AutoCAD 2024. You'll notice when opening this DWG, I receive a warning. This is just because the DWG was originally created in DraftSight. There's nothing functionally wrong here, so I can just bypass this. Drawings created in DraftSight will still work just fine in AutoCAD, and vice versa. First, we have our Home tab for basic geometry and options, layer management, etc. The Insert tab, Annotate for markup and review or dimensioning, and a handful of additional tabs for accessing other tools and options. All pretty basic stuff, and the interface is very clean. At the bottom of the screen, we have several buttons to toggle options like Ortho, Polar, and Auto Snap, among others. Now let's take a look at the same document in DraftSight. While clearly a different interface, they're remarkably similar with Home and Insert tabs, Annotate, Constraints, which is the same as Parametric and AutoCAD, and the Manage tab. You'll also find a Power Tools tab for accessing DraftSight add-ins like the Draw Compare tool, G-Code Generator, and Image Tracer. Another thing you'll notice here is the ability to quickly switch to the old-school classic UI within DraftSight at the top left of the screen, which can be nice if you prefer to use toolbars in the command prompt rather than the ribbon. There's also a dedicated workspace available for 3D modeling in the Enterprise Plus version. And of course, all these workspaces are entirely customizable, just like AutoCAD. And once again, we have several toggleable options for Snap, Ortho, etc., all with matching keyboard shortcuts. Layer management is critical when working with complex drawings, and the Layer Manager in AutoCAD has set the standard for adjusting layer properties and controlling visibility. Everything needed for managing layers exists within one simple interface, and DraftSight has clearly taken notice of this as well. The Layers Manager in DraftSight is once again remarkably similar, and while the naming conventions and column arrangement may be a bit different, you can see that the functionality is essentially identical. Layer Preview is also very handy here, allowing you to quickly isolate a single layer and view its contents to better understand and work with the drawing. Drawing tools in AutoCAD allow for the construction of lines, rectangles, circles, arcs, and so on, as would be expected of any 2D CAD program. Arrays create associative patterns of objects, which can easily be adjusted using the graphical handles, otherwise known as grips. Dimensions are easily added to sketched objects, and non-parametric dimensions can have their values adjusted while revision clouds and text tools allow users to quickly review and suggest changes to documents. In DraftSight, these tools are largely the same, even down to arrays, although admittedly the user interface for arrays is a bit more intuitive in AutoCAD. All that being said, like AutoCAD, DraftSight provides all the necessary tools to create, edit, review, and mark up DWG and DXF files. Perhaps one of the biggest advantages of DraftSight is that it speaks the language of AutoCAD, making it exceptionally easy for AutoCAD veterans to use. Here's an example of a few commands being run through the command prompt in AutoCAD. First, we have moco row being used to rotate a block. I'll also add a few donuts for good measure and finish off with an M line. All of these commands can be activated in the exact same way in DraftSight using the exact same aliases. Technically, DraftSight uses different aliases for its commands, but it still recognizes AutoCAD aliases, meaning you don't need to learn a hundred new command names. Here's the same block being rotated with Moco Row, known as Quick Modify in DraftSight. Then we have our donuts, or rings in this case. And finally, the M line, otherwise known as a rich line. This intuitiveness allows existing AutoCAD users to essentially skip the software's learning curve. Dynamic blocks are a major aspect of many designs, and AutoCAD introduced them way back in 2005. These blocks are configurable and can be easily adjusted to change shape and size using the graphical grips. Blocks can be inserted from a drive or network location, or blocks can be reused from within the open document. 
The same is true for draft site, although here they're known as custom blocks. They work essentially the same way and make it exceptionally easy to standardize and reuse existing design data. Notably, blocks created in AutoCAD can also be used within DraftSite, so a reuse of legacy data is no problem. Importing PDF files is a common method of collaboration when working with 2D data, and both AutoCAD and DraftSite offer workflows for importing PDFs. Here in AutoCAD, a PDF is selected, the pages to import are identified, and the import options are set as needed. Once confirmed, the PDF is translated into selectable objects, layers are automatically generated, and the drawing is ready for editing. In DraftSite, the process is very similar, but with a couple notable differences. First is the existence of a batch processing option, which allows multiple PDFs to be converted into drawing entities simultaneously for more efficient processing. The second is the required explode command after import, as importing a single PDF in DraftSite initially results in a block. Once the explode is completed, the drawing is ready for editing. Finally, the options available to customize AutoCAD and DraftSite are very similar, despite the dialogues being set up quite a bit differently. It's important to note that customization files created in AutoCAD are compatible with DraftSite, meaning that custom menus, layer states, fonts, print settings, and even Lisp routines that you may have spent hours developing can all be reused. This makes for quick setup and an even shallower learning curve if you're already an experienced AutoCAD user. Up to now, we've only focused on the similarities between AutoCAD and DraftSite, and there are certainly a lot of them, but what about the differences? While the core functions of both programs are to create, review, and edit 2D drawing files, AutoCAD offers many add-ins that extend its functionality with powerful industry-specific tool sets for AEC, electrical, and facility management, among many others. While DraftSite does offer a handful of add-ins and a version geared toward mechanical designers, it can't yet compete with the breadth of extensions available for AutoCAD. DraftSite isn't without its own advantages, though. We've already seen the familiar user interface, which may not necessarily be an advantage on its own, but certainly makes it easier to transition to DraftSite and take advantage of other benefits. For example, data management is controlled through PDM, which can be particularly helpful for companies already taking advantage of SOLIDWORKS 3D CAD, since SOLIDWORKS uses the same documentation management system. DraftSite also offers dedicated technical support through Hawkridge Systems, with DraftSite experts on staff and prepared to help you handle your toughest obstacles and keep your projects on track. Finally, and for many of the most important difference, is the available licensing options for each program and the associated cost. As you may already know, Autodesk officially announced the end of both perpetual and network licensing in 2021, opting for a user named approach instead and limiting licensing flexibility. On the other hand, DraftSite Enterprise Editions are offered with both perpetual and network options, meaning that licenses are owned indefinitely without a required annual fee and can be shared by multiple users. It's important to note that these license types are only offered by resellers such as Hawkridge Systems and are not available through the DraftSite website. For users who don't require AutoCAD's extensive industry-specific add-ins, and especially for those who only use AutoCAD part-time or occasionally, DraftSite Enterprise offers the potential to save thousands of dollars annually. The following section of this video will illustrate this through two short case studies. Prices are always subject to change, and discounts are common, so keep in mind that these case studies use the base cost for software as of 2023. A seat of AutoCAD costs $1,955 annually, with no option for a perpetual license. A comparable perpetual network seat of DraftSite Enterprise Plus costs $1,196 initially, with an optional yearly maintenance fee of $499. Even in the most conservative scenario, Assuming the maintenance cost is paid yearly and a license of DraftSite Enterprise Professional is purchased for every AutoCAD user, DraftSite can save you over $1,000 annually per user over five years. Things get a bit more interesting when part-time and casual users are considered as they can take advantage of network licensing with DraftSite and share licenses. This results in fewer total licenses being required. Suppose a team of 10 AutoCAD users consists of five full-time and five part-time or occasional users. Assuming that the five part-time and occasional users can share two draft site licenses, this brings the total license count down to seven rather than 10. In this scenario, the team of 10 users could expect to save over $7,000 or nearly 40% in the first year alone, increasing to over $70,000 or nearly 75% 
over five years. While Autodesk does offer a flex program for occasional use, the economics can quickly become prohibitive even for occasional users. According to the Autodesk website, three users requiring access to AutoCAD for just four days per month would require over $3,000 worth of tokens, or about the same cost as the yearly maintenance for six licenses of DraftSite Enterprise Plus. Total cost savings can be difficult to estimate, and we understand that certain advanced AutoCAD users may not be able to take advantage of DraftSite. That being said, in many scenarios, DraftSite can offer significant cost savings while providing the same 2D CAD tools for creating, reviewing, editing, and collaborating with drawings to keep your business running. If you're interested in seeing what your cost saving potential could look like, consider reaching out to discuss with the Hawkridge Systems team, and thanks for watching.